All right, in this lesson, we are going to talk about the last kind of big topic here in this section, and that is petty cash and why companies use petty cash and why it's advantageous to have a petty cash account in your company. So let's get started here with the petty cash system. So what is petty cash? Well, petty cash is a quick cash that is set aside available to reimburse for small purchases. Now, the key word here is small purchases. Now, who defines small purchases? The company defines small purchases. So we don't necessarily say that it's uh, under $100 or $150. It really just depends on what the company wants to set as their petty cash amount. Now, this is re the reason for this is this is to reduce having to issue checks for small dollar items that your company needs to reimburse. So obviously, if you buy something from a vendor and there's a PO system in place, then maybe you're going to have to issue that check. But if an employee goes out and buys something like a ream of paper here, uh, we don't want to have to go through this whole reimbursement process. Let's just go ahead and pay them the $4.95 for the, the ream of paper, and then I'll take their receipt in exchange for the cash. And then uh, once we get a whole bunch of it, then we're going to deal with it into the general ledger system. Okay, so here are some of the steps to petty cash. The first one is we're going to establish the petty cash account or the petty cash fund. Then we're going to start reimbursing expenses through the petty cash fund. And then at the very end, we are going to replenish the fund when either it gets low or we're at the end of an accounting period and we need to book all of those expenses so that they are in the right period. So that's kind of the steps to the petty cash. And we have an example in the next lesson, which will go through all three steps. But that's basically what we need to do in a petty cash system. Now, how do we establish the petty cash fund? Well, a petty cash fund is established by the company issuing a check to an employee who will become the custodian of the petty cash fund. So we assign one employee or a couple employees in the office to be the custodian of the petty cash, and they are responsible for that cash all the way through the entire process. So usually we'll issue a check in their name so that they can cash it and then bring the cash back to their desk or their office or wherever they work. Then once they have that, we are going to start reimbursing expenses. So within the policy of the company, so whatever policy the company comes up with, the custodian will reimburse employees who bring a valid receipt to the custodian. The receipt acts as the missing cash within the petty cash fund. Now, the reimburse expense is not reported in the company's books until the petty cash is reimbursed. So kind of logistically what happens here is uh, in, I have $100 of petty cash, let's say, and you need to re reimburse $20. So in order for me to give you $20 out of my petty cash, you need to give me a $20 receipt. So if you give me a $20 receipt, I give you $20 cash. So now the petty cash fund has $80 in cash and a $20 receipt, which equals $100, which is what I started with. So that's what we want to keep. And then I reimburse someone else for 10. So now it's 70, 30 and another 20 and it's now 50, 50 and so on and so on. So the combined amount of cash that I have and the receipt must equal the total amount of petty cash that it was given at the very beginning. Now, your company might have a policy that says that you don't um, you can go ahead and give out a little bit more so that you don't have to give out change. So maybe um, if they come to you with a receipt for $4.95, it's okay to give them $5 and then we'll deal with the five cents. So again, we will look at the policy to see what we need to do. And that's just an efficiency thing. You don't want to have the person who has the petty cash to have all of this change just to be able to make change for whatever opportunity there is. So uh, there may be a policy that says, if it's underneath 45 cents or 40 cents, you can go ahead and round it up or down or whatever it might be. Not down, but up, okay? All right, so we reimburse the expenses. Oh, last thing here, the reimbursed expenses is not reported in the company's books. So once we receive this receipt, we don't go and just book the entry yet. We're just gonna hold on to all the receipts and then we will book them when we replenish the petty cash fund. Now, at some point in time, we're gonna have to replenish the fund. When we replenish the fund, it's because it's low. So when the petty cash fund is low, the custodian requests the funds to be replenished by submitting the receipts to the accounting department in exchange for another check to re uh, replenish the petty cash 
fund. So whatever the policy says, or maybe you just do it when you get, um, when it's all gone, whatever it might be, then we need to take the receipts, give them to the accounting department. The accounting department will then book the entries and then issue another check for cash to replenish the petty cash to its normal stance. Now, some companies work this a little differently. Um, instead of just submitting the receipt, they will also want you to submit all cash so that they can just issue one full check back to you for let's say $300 instead of $292.55. Um, so you have to kind of think on what you want to do. But the most effective way is just giving them the receipts and then you getting the cash for the difference of what you have and what you submitted, okay? So that is a quick look at the petty cash system. In the next and last lesson in this section, we're actually gonna walk through a petty cash example and show you the journal entries related to establishing that petty cash, reimbursing the petty cash, or sorry, reimbursing the expenses, and then finally replenishing the petty cash account. So until then, we'll see you in the next lesson. Hey guys, it is Patrick. Don't forget to press the like button and share this video with someone who could get a lot of use from watching this lesson, like maybe a classmate or maybe a friend or maybe just a parent just because you wanted to share this video because you're very excited about what you saw. Share it with someone. And if you want to help us grow and help us make sure that we put the very best in accounting topics out on YouTube, make sure you press the subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. That way you're alerted every time we post videos to this channel. Now, I do this with every one of my classes at the end of class. What did you learn from this lesson? Put that in the comment section below and I'll respond to you on what you got out of this video. So hope you enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next lesson.